Mike knew his business, and so uh, so we were we were uh, I would say we were competent shared counters, and we uh, and we uh, we paid close attention to the architectural detail, and we were we were moving we were moving very fast. So it was a reconnaissance level survey. We published that in '79, so that we were talking about the field work was done in '76 and '77. Anna shows up in 78, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure that that was the first call we got from Anna, it was 1978, when we were writing up, we were, we were doing other stuff at the time as well, so you never, working with, uh, working as an archaeologist, that contract archaeologist in those days, and I assume it's the same these days, is like working for the Shrine Circus. So, one season you're an acrobat, or you're the ring, you're a big deal, you know, you get to wear the red coat and carry the whip. And the next season you're a clown. But, but you're always working with the same people who are all changing positions as well. So, so Mike and I were, I mean, we were working with Rich in the public service company, but we also had other contracts. And uh, I think we were working on Squaw, writing up Squaw Springs when Anna called early one morning. And uh, these are hard to keep track of this. That was in 78, that's all I remember. Um, what should I say? So in the early 1980s, uh, the uh, late 70s, the basin was threatened with uh, coal mining. And uh, what do they call the PRLAs? The, uh, I can't remember what they meant. But anyway, there was a big deal. There was, a, there was much turmoil in the BLM. And the idea was, as it was expressed to us, is that they were going to pedestal Chaco Canyon. And uh, there was, uh, so the roads, God, so you have to back up here and say when, when we were working in the canyon early on, there's all these little historical quirks as to why we think what we think about stuff. And one of them is, is that the survey crews in the canyon, which I was on, uh, relinquished uh, our, we weren't required to record things that we thought were roads because that was the remote sensing center's business. And we weren't expected to identify things that were canals because that was Gwen Vivian's business. So we would say, for example, when we were working at Penasco Blanco, we'd walk down the valley every morning and walk by some of the stuff that Vivian was excavating and we'd go, every morning we'd walk by the, what we called Vivian's Headgate. And we'd say, well, there's Vivian Headgate. I don't think we ever recorded it. We weren't expected to, you know? So, uh, so we go into the, we go into the, the so we have a, we have this survey, there's, there's warfare between the Remote Sensing Center, Tom Lyons of the Remote Sensing Center, and Jim Judge, of the, uh, who is the, the big cheese there in the Chaco Center. But apparently there was some uh, coordination between uh, Jim and the, the BLM archeologist, Leo Flynn, to, uh, uh, disprove the idea that the alignments coming out of Alto were prehistoric. So, uh, in a very heroic, I would say a very heroic person at that time was Chris Kincaid. And she uh, convinced her, uh, her, whoever was, whatever she did, she got a project going to uh, identify the question, the burning question was, are, the pre, are these alignments actually pre-Columbian features? And so in 1980, we went to the field with that mandate, um, which is, uh, and of course, what we did was we, well, you know, that's a complicated thing. But anyway, we determined that they were in fact pre-Columbian features and you could in fact uh, they were, in fact, it had a, had a uh, verifiable, visible, uh, tangible, empirical uh, manifestation. You, you could work with them. 
they they weren't they weren't our imaginations not entirely anyway but uh so um and it was during the, i'm working back to this question about about symmetry and design and uh so now we got anna in the mix by that time and and i'm working with uh this is just all too complicated. I'm working with Scott Andre, who's working with Anna. And what we're doing for Anna is he's a surveyor. He's a licensed surveyor. He's, he was Debney Ford's husband. And so Scott and I, on our weekends and evenings, would come in and, and we surveyed in the buildings of the Corps, amongst other things. And that gave us the opportunity to actually look at the architecture of the core uh, as one physical entity. The Chaco Center, bless their little hearts, at the, time, at the time Scott and I were working with Anna, the archeologists, not only had they not mapped the sites accurately, but they had not mapped them together. So there was, at the time, there was no way to pull this architecture together. And we had a, we had another problem, and that was the fact that the problem with the orthophotos for the, I'm gonna let Rich tell that story. So anyway, we had some problems. And, uh, and so it was in 1978 when, uh, what's that fellow's name? That recognized the Cardinal? Oh, uh, Fritz. Fritz. So in 1978, John Fritz recognizes that there's a card that there's that this whole mess is laid out cardinally, and I think all he had to do is just pull out a map and go, "Wow, you had to think that way." And meanwhile, Scott and I are mapping this stuff together, and that and that's the when we first started realizing that we had all this web of interconnections that we could that we could verify that that uh, and we weren't. We weren't playing with the we we weren't playing with the astronomical alignments. We were just playing with physical relationships, and realized that these these buildings were addressing each other, and there was a plan from day one. There was no noise in it. It was totally clean. Uh, so they didn't. Well, of course, here we see that they realigned this building, but that's what you get. You get you get tweaking but you just don't get a lot of crap laying around all over the place, you know. They didn't, it, it's really, really clean. Um, so during this period, so we're interacting with Anna. She's doing the astronomical stuff. Scott and I are doing the mapping for, the baseline mapping for her. And then the road, then the coal threat is going on. And we end up doing the roads, uh, I end up working on the roads project and uh, I'm working there with uh, Fred Niles, who's a geomorphologist. And working with Fred, we were able to address the, uh, the earth and architecture issues. And the big one, right off the bat for us, was is that mound, is the Rinconada mound, uh, cultural or is it natural and of course it's cultural but it doesn't have any sherds on it so it can't be in the in Chaco Canyon if it doesn't have a shirt on it, it can't be a site 